My name is Edouard Machery and I teach philosophy at the University of Pittsburgh and I teach in the Department of History and Philosophy of Science. So um, my interest is mostly in the philosophy of psychology, the philosophy of anthropology, mostly the sciences that bear on human beings and that study human beings. As you know, racism is a negative attitude toward other races, right? White people toward black people, black people toward Latinos, for example. And psychologists over the years have, do have done a lot of work on why people are racist and on what we can do to fight against racism. There's very little work on what we can do to improve our attitudes toward apes. And the, the idea uh, of the essay was to try to, to use the science coming from psychology and anthropology to uh, uh, find solutions and ways to improve our attitudes toward apes. Um, so that was the basic idea behind the project. Hope is that the basic mechanisms behind racism are quite similar to the mechanisms behind, behind apism, uh, apism. So the solutions to racism would also be solutions to our negative attitudes or, or indifference toward apes. So there are many, many solutions that one could think about. And what I was excited about is um, to try to see whether some commonsensical, some obvious solutions would be the one which would be likely to work, right? And so I go through a few solutions, um, one which I call the contact hypothesis, you know, the idea that by, by interacting, by having contact with a apes, people could, would come to have a positive attitude toward, toward apes. Um, and I discussed that idea. Another solution, an another proposal is to uh, look at uh, enlightening people, giving information to people, and to assess uh, whether that solution would work. And a third solution is to, a third hypothesis, is to uh, con convince people to treat apes as individuals. And also, again, I try to assess this idea. It's part of the way we relate to apes on an everyday basis as a whole, as a species. Right? We very rarely view apes as individuals. So one of the goals was to, say, was to assess whether if we can change the way lay people relate to, relate to, to apes, view them as individuals, whether they would come to care about apes. And I think there are a lot of reasons to be very optimistic about this strategy. One reason is, if you look a little bit at the history of um, animal welfare, right? So the reason why animal welfare was uh, turned into a law in 1966 by, by the Animal Welfare Act uh, was because uh, some journalists turned some dogs into very, into a very, very, um, um, into individuals. So there's this uh, very famous dog called Pepper, which disappeared in 1965. And there was a journalist who wrote a very beautiful piece about that dog and about the fact that it, it disappeared and was killed for pharmaceutical purposes. And as a result, most Americans got outraged. And the global outrage was very influential in convincing Congress to pass this now very influential law uh, which protects right, uh, which protects animals and give animals uh, rights. So the idea would be to do the same thing for apes. That goes both ways. Uh, on the one hand, uh, right now, often apes are, as I said, they're viewed as a species. We talk about chimpanzees, we talk about um, uh, uh, orangutans, we talk about gibbons. We don't talk about specific individuals. So one thing the media could do is, whenever we talk about chimpanzees, we could describe specific individuals, right? And we could give them a life history, we could talk about their personality, we could talk about differences between various chimpanzees, for example. So the media, in fact, could change the way it, it relates, it describes, uh, apes and let people, people you know, media consumers like me, like you, uh, we could in a sense change our relation to apes and as a result our emotional relation to apes would be transformed. Enlightenment strategy is indeed, uh, it's a cognitive strategy, it's an intellectualist strategy and it basically consists in providing information to people in trying to correct mistaken beliefs about what apes are and about uh, uh, apes rights and it surely should be done. There's a, there's a clear sense in which we want to correct people's, people's mistakes, people's errors. So the, but we also want to add some emotions to, to just information. Because uh, information is not going to stick if we don't put emotions and affect in, in the mix. On my view, one of the real issues 
with our relation to apes is the fact that we don't care about apes. We, don't, we are indifferent to their welfare. Um, what we really want to do is find solutions to increase our concern with um, the lives of, of apes throughout the world. And just providing information probably will not do the trick, even so, as I said, it's really needed. Absolutely. So neuroscience indeed has done a lot of work on, on, on empathy. Damasio, for example, has been a leader in, in, in that area. And uh, we have a more subtle understanding of what causes empathy, both coming from neuroscience and also from traditional social psychology. Um, that science, in fact, on my view, should be used to uh, uh, modify our attitudes toward, toward apes. Right? And one of the reasons why I focus on individuals is because both neuroscience and psychology have shown that it's much easier to feel empathy for individuals than for groups. Right? So we can feel empathy for a specific pet. It's much harder, it's much harder to feel empathy for dogs in general. Right? We can feel empathy for a specific human being much harder to feel empathy for a whole country or a whole population. And after all, we know that, don't we? That's why when you are raising money, when a company is raising money or when a, a charity is raising money, they always put pictures of individuals because empathy is triggered by specific individuals, not by abstractions. Uh, that comes from the sciences, neuroscience, psychology. And if one cares about the welfare of apes, as I do, uh, we should take that science to find strategies to change our emotional relations to, uh, to apes. Some concerns with the idea that the best strategy is to individualize, individualize apes. One of them is whether it's really doable, particularly when we uh, are concerned with uh, wild ape populations. I think it is possible. In fact, it has been done to some extent by uh, some researchers who have uh, uh, identified specific apes and followed their life, followed their uh, uh, you know, their life history, their development, their growth. They are moving from being small apes to being powerful apes in their, in, in their, in their group. So it has been done by, 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 by scientists and it is perfectly doable. Uh, journalists and people who write uh, or do movies about, about apes, in fact, could, uh, when they go to, to uh, Africa, for example, to, do, um, you know, to, to make movies about uh, uh, apes, instead of describing apes in general and have pictures of, or movies of apes in general, they could in fact focus on specific individuals and, and describe their social relations, how they relate to other individuals. So it is doable. Another concern is um, whether once we develop this uh, emotional bond with a specific individual, right, either in the wild or in a research facility, for example, whether that would generalize to the whole uh, uh, to other apes, right? And that's actually, re that's actually a concern. Um, you know, it's perfectly possible to care about an individual, but to fail to care about uh, other individuals, right? We can care about a specific dog or pet, but we can have very little interest in dogs in general. So that's a concern with the strategy of individual individualizing apes. Um, there are ways to do that. It's by trying to connect various individuals to one another and see how they are related to, related to, one, to one another in a social environment. That could be a way to prime people to generalize their emotional bond to specific individuals, to the whole, uh, uh, to the whole group, and maybe from the whole group to the whole species. But of course, it's, it's not a certainty. But I think it's worth trying because I think the stakes are really quite high. And um, you know, what, we really, what we really want is to change our relation to apes. We want to change our emotional relation to apes. And individualization is probably one of the best strategy as far as we know, as far as we're given, given the science. Um, it may have limits, but it's probably worth trying. Plant on the, of the apes, the last one, the one I saw two years ago, I thought was actually quite, quite helpful because in contrast to some movies that involve apes, it did single out some specific individuals, uh, some specific individual apes, and uh, gave them a story and gave them a personality, which they do have actually in the real world. Apes have personality, apes differ from one another, apes interact as individuals with one another, and you know, it's very clear with chimpanzees. Um, so the movie actually was very successful in that respect. He gave us a sense that Apes are individuals, they are in a sense persons, right? They have their personalities, they act differently from one another. Um, so that, in that respect, the movie was successful. Of course, the movie had flaws, just like 
anything, and uh, it, it does relate in a sense to the limitations of the, of the strategy I'm proposing. And the limitations are, we also want to provide information. We also want to have a realistic picture of what apes are. And the movie, in a sense, while it is success successful in turning a specific ape into an individual person, it fails in uh, giving us very unrealistic picture of what an ape is. So what that, what that does suggest, in my view, is what we want to do. We want to have a, a strategy that plays on our emotions, that add emotion. And indiv individualization is probably a very good strategy for that. But we don't want to forget also providing information, realistic information, to, to people. So I think one of the challenges for the future is actually to combine both enlightenment Providing information, correcting mistakes, having uh, realistic pictures of what an ape is, and also um, uh, playing with people's emotional attach attachment to, to apes.